Numbers chapter number 23. Amen. The young people will be standing here this morning. I'm not going to talk much about what I'm going to preach on until I've laid my foundation, <clears throat> but I'm going to read my text. And I just have to tell you, if we have anybody in here that wants to produce movies or anything, I just would love for someone to produce a movie on uh, Numbers 23 and 24. Uh, wouldn't it be great to see that animation of Balaam's donkey talking to him? I mean, and the angel and him not see. I mean, how phenomenal would that be? I mean, bring the Word of God to life. I mean, just a phenomenal passage of Scripture. And, uh, and so uh, we'll talk a little bit more, but we're jumping in where Balak is wanting uh, Balaam, uh, this prophet, the Mesopotamian prophet, to go and uh, uh, to, to, to deliver a curse to God's people. And, uh, and I'll talk more about it in a moment. But in verse number 16, 23, verse number 16, the Bible says, And the Lord uh, met Balaam. And put a word in his mouth. Amen. Don't you want the Lord to meet us and put words in our right. mouth? Right. Sometimes I put my foot in my mouth, but I'd rather the Lord put the word in my mouth. Right. Amen. And, and say, go into Balak and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering. And the princes of uh, Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, what hath the Lord spoken? Uh, and the Bible says, and he took up this parable, and he said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man. Amen. May I be a reminder to you of these words? God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall we not do it? Or hath he spoken, and, 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 and shall he not uh, make it good? I'm going to stop right there. And I, I want to just talk to you a little bit about God. God's not a man. God is far beyond man. God's out of the scope of man. Uh, we're not even in the same uh, same uh, sphere, though we've been created like our, our, our Father. Amen. We cannot even be compared uh, to the nature of God. So when we begin to think about the eloquence of, of who Jesus Christ is, Sister Jan, uh, just words fail to be able to describe who God is. Amen. And, 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 and I love doing that as a, as a pastor, as a preacher. We love describing who God is. But yet I fail so miserably at doing it, even with my best of, uh, of efforts. And so uh, we can craft and we can try to convey the, the, the transcendence of God. But too many times and almost always, if not always, we are so far off, Brother David, because of how great this God is in whom we serve. Now bear with me. I am trying to get somewhere. And so men uh, try to measure God and, and, and their tongue fail. Uh, uh, even those who, who uh, 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 have the most eloquent of speech, they can't describe God. But if I were to tell you this morning that He is wonderful, what would you say? Do you think that He's wonderful? I believe that God is wonderful. And I believe that if I were to ask, there would be a unanimous, unanimously in here, everybody would say that God is wonderful. How many of you believe that God is great? Amen. God is great. Amen. And you can, you can, uh, the psalmist, he says it well as he talks about the greatness of, of God. He says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. So God is great. Amen. That is a word to describe Him. And if you were to describe God as being holy, do you think God is holy? Amen. Uh, the, the prophet, he wrote, he said, uh, and the angels cried, holy, holy, holy. Amen. We can describe God with so many words. His greatness is so vast. He's so wonderful. And if I said to you, is God excellent? Amen. We talk about excellence. Say, is God excellent? You would say, yes, He is. Amen. If you would say, uh, if I would say to you this morning, would you say that we can describe God as being compassionate? Would you say, yes, Brother Seville, God is compassionate. Someone asked me this week, how can I, how can I want God to, to be mean to this person because of what they did to me? 
And I said, oh, but the excellence, the greatness of God, the forgiveness of God, and how wonderful is He, and the compassion of God, because none of us deserve it. So God is compassionate. If I would say, is God omnipotent, you would say that's true. All these words line up that He's righteous, that He's pure, that He's hallowed, that He's holy, that He's clean, that He's virtuous, that He's sacred. He is powerful and, 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 and He is mighty, strong, dominant, compelling, great, and victorious. Keep bearing with Him. Try to lay a foundation. I'm almost there. Amen. We talk about Him being compassionate and tender and, and benevolent and, and sympathetic and caring and general, uh, gentle. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's awesome. He's grand. He's breathtaking. He's overwhelming. He's tremendous. He's remarkable. He's amazing. He's astounding. But one word that we cannot use to describe God. Are you holding on to your seat? Is we cannot say that God is incredible. And they said, Brother Bill, how can you say that you can say that God is not incredible? Because the word incredible means this in itself. Impossible to believe. Amen. <laughs> so if there's one word that we cannot describe God as, it's incredible. You take the word in and put in front of something, it means not, it means, it means no, it means without. And so if you say, well, they're pretty inconsiderate, what does it mean? It means not considerate. Or if you say, uh, 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 that is just implicable, what does that mean? That means it's without explanation. That in means not. Or you may uh, uh, once again say the word inconvenient. What does that mean, Sister Susan? That means it's not, not having Walmart around. It's pretty inconvenient. And, and upper Dolphin area without Walmart, right? It's not convenient. And so when you put the word in in front of it, it, it means not. So one thing that our Lord Jesus Christ is not is He is not incredible because you take credible and you put word uh, in in front of it, it means not credible. But everything about God this morning is credible. And that's simply what I want to talk about for a few moments. The credibility of God. Amen. When you look at a lawyer, what a lawyer does, he goes to his job, and his job is to fight uh, uh, his, 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 his opponent, and he tries to take away the credibility from them, to take away all credibility, and make them incre incredible. But God is not incredible. Amen. My message this morning is there's nothing that's incredible about God. Everything He says, you can believe. Everything that He promises, you can hope for. Everything that He states that needs to be the foundation of our life, you can bank upon it that it needs to be the foundation of our life. Amen. You can trust Him. You can believe Him. You can rely on Him. You can depend on Him because Jesus is not incredible. He is eminently credible this morning. Amen. He is credible. Everything about who He is. Amen. Everything about what He says. Every promise. Everything about what God asks you to do. Even if it seems like it's crazy and off the wall. Amen. You can trust Him with it this morning. Amen. There are things about our life as Christians where God may ask you to stand and you may say, God, this seems uh, it's so ridiculous. The God, this seems like I'm standing. This seems like it's contrary. Amen. But if God asks you to do it, amen, you can better believe that it is credible that God is working for your good and for His glory. Amen. And that all may see that He is God Almighty. And so I, I'm not going to go into a great details of the text with, with, with Balaam and, uh, and Balak here. But here, while we look at the story, we find that, that, that Balaam wants to, to, to uh, 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 Balak wants Balaam to curse Israel, and he's willing to pay for it. I'll pay you for it. Just give a curse against Israel. I hate that. And so Balaam 
Amen. They're at two different uh, vantage points. So here it is that Balak is offering a sacrifice and Balaam walks away to get a word from the Lord. And so verse number 19, he returns and he gives this word at the Balak well, when he comes back. He says, have you heard from God? What's the word? And Balaam says this, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? For hath he spoken, and shall not he make it good? See, Balak learned this one thing about God. When God puts a word in your mouth, you're going to have to speak it. You don't have to worry if God meant or didn't mean what he was saying. Because when God puts a word in your mouth, amen, God means what He has said. You better make sure it's God. Amen, you better make sure it lines up with the word of God. But when God puts it in your mouth, when God puts it in your heart, when God puts it in your life, amen, you don't have to worry. He won't lie. He won't repent. Amen. He doesn't think of something and say something that He won't do. Because everything that He speaks, He will follow through on. Mm -hmm. How many of you as parents realize that sometimes you say things and you're not able to follow through? Amen. Unfortunately, it is that way. Not that we don't have good intent because our intent is very good, but our ability to be able to follow through sometimes just isn't what we would like for it to be. We don't have the resources or whatever it is that, that, that hinders us from being able to fulfill that. Amen. But God, when He speaks, He will never speak anything that He will not fulfill. Some of you maybe even remember promises someone has told you, and you can remember that they went back on the promise. Maybe not because they meant to or intended to or intentionally did it to hurt you or disappoint you, but because they maybe forgot or whatever was the reason innocently they did it. But God will even innocently not fulfill His promise. He will always keep every promise that He speaks to us. Let's look at the Word of God a little bit. After the flood, when Noah had offered a burnt offering, God said this to Noah. In Genesis 8, verse number 22, God says, While the earth remaineth, the seed time and harvest, and the cold and heat, the summer and the winter, and the day and night shall not cease. God said, Wait a second. As long as the earth remaineth, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but something I know about that is we have spring and we have fall and we have the necessary thing of winter to help the ground do what it needs to do to produce in spring again. So we have the change of seasons. Amen. Every year when, it's, when cold weather comes and the mercury starts plummeting down and, and the thermometer, amen, you know what? God is still in control and God is still going to take care of things through every season of our life. Amen. Through every season of time, God has promised that He'll still be there and He will be there. Amen. amen. Seasons change. Times come and go. But God is still there. He is not incredible, but He is credible for what He says. Amen. He is faithful. Do you ever think about this? Amen. When the sun rises every morning, amen, it comes up the first ray of day. Amen. He's saying, wait, I'm shedding some light just to show you that I'm still speaking truth. I'm still here because I'm credible. Mm -hmm. Amen. When the moon shines at night. Amen. He's still there when He kisses you good night. Amen. He reminds you, I'm going to be there if you wake up in the night. I'm going to be there in the next morning. My mercies are going to be new because God is credible. Amen. Every word that He says has credibility to it. Amen. As the earth is on rotation, every revolution of every star, every planet, amen, is a witness to us, amen, that God is faithful. Amen. He's credible. In Hebrews 1 3, the Bible says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and the upholding of all things by the word of his power. Amen. If he speaks it, amen, it is powerful because it will happen. Right. Amen. amen. He says he's coming back. 
He's come back. Amen. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you. Amen. He tells you that when you are weak, that His strength is made perfect in you. Amen. He will keep it because He is credible. There is power in His Word. Amen. Amen. I just want to be an encouragement this morning. If He can hold the universe in orbit, Amen. trust me, Amen. He can care for you. Amen. Amen, because He values you as much as keeping the universe in orbit. Amen. But there's more power in keeping the universe in orbit than there is to have to take care of you and I. He can do it. <clears throat> he can do it. Every bird, every flower testifies. Listen to the credibility of God. Therefore I say to you, Jesus said, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat, body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither, neither do they gather into bars, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye much, are, are ye much better than they? And, and, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider ye the lilies of the field, how they grow, and how they toil not, neither do, do they spin. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore God clothed the grass of the field which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall not much more he clothe you, O ye of a little faith? I want to tell you that he can be trusted because he is credible. Amen. 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 He's credible. Amen. Even when He doesn't make sense to our minds, Amen. He can be trusted. Tucked away in 2 Kings chapter number 3, we read of the nation of Israel. And the Old Testament is a wonderful picture of, of things that is to come and a shadow and type of us as believers. And so here it is that the, the nation of Israel, they have been in battle. They go away to the wilderness. And so as they traveled seven days into the wilderness, they run into a problem. There is no water. That's a big problem. That's a real big problem for a lot of people and a lot of livestock. Big problem. No water. Try living your life without water. It just doesn't happen. And so they come and they consult with Elisha, the prophet, the man of God. Understand, they didn't have the word of God. Amen. Uh, uh, like we have today to look at, to read, to understand. So in these seasons, Hebrews tells us, in certain times and in divers places, God gave them glimpses and God used prophets to speak to them. So here it was, the man of God began to speak to them. Are you ready to hear what, 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 what the man of God has to say to them? He's going to tell them something to do. He's probably going to tell them to walk to the sink and turn the spigot on, isn't he? How about go get the garden hose? Or how about just unratchet the, the fire hydrant? No, it's not that simple. God speaks to the man of God. And he says to him, he said, make this valley full of ditches. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's just what we wanted to hear. <laughs> If we're not already tired, if we've not already uh, uh, wore out a harebrained idea that now we're going to sweat all the fluids that we have in our bodies out by digging ditches. Come on, let's be real, folks. Amen. Here they are. It seems like a crazy idea, but this is what God has spoken. Amen. I want you to know something, that when God speaks, He's not incredible, but He is credible with everything that He speaks. And so here it is that they follow the commandments of God and all that long. Here they are digging ditches and all through the wilderness and through the valley. There they are digging ditches and they drink and there's plenty of water and the morning sun rises and it doesn't make sense what we need to dig. These thousands of holes and make these ditches, but all it makes complete sense to God because when the enemy comes for them, amen, they look and they see the reflection of the sun and they think it's blood that is being reflected and they're thinking that there's a war going on, amen, and that they better get out of there if they want their lives to be spared. I want to tell you, sometimes in our life, we look at the Word of God, we hear the Word of God, we trust God, and it seems so incredibly ridiculous, and we think this seems like another harebrained idea, but we don't know what God's about to do in the morning. So trust God when it seems 
seems like uh, the situation. Can I trust it? Amen. Know that God is credible. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Trust Him. What are the things you're trusting God for today? And you may say, it seems ludicrous. It seems crazy. It seems like, why? Trust God. Because this morning, my friend, God's crap. You can trust Him. If the Bible does one thing, it demonstrates to us the trustworthiness of God. You see, you can generally learn the character of someone by those who know them best. And so, when you look at Jesus Christ, you look at God. Solomon qualifies as the wisest man ever. The Word of God gives us that information. And this is his testimony. He said, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he hath promised. Hang on to your seat. There hath not one word failed of all of His good promise, which He promised by the hand of Moses, His servant. His servant. Amen. There has not one word failed of His promise. What is that Scripture that you're hanging on to this morning for your life situation right now? Amen. What is that Scripture that means so much to you that you're banking on it and believing? I want to tell you that God is credible. Amen. Solomon said not one word ever failed of the promises of God, but God kept them. Next, we, re we can look at Simon Peter. Simon Peter is like, he had been fishing all night long. And in Luke chapter number 5, you know, we read that he had caught nothing and, and, and Jesus showed up. And these are the boats that he used for platforms for speaking. And, and he said to him, he said, listen, uh, 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 why don't you uh, throw out your nets into the other part, uh, out into the deep water? Why don't you lower your nets? And, and Peter said, I said to him, amen, Master, we've toiled all night and we've not caught anything. Why would I go throw my net in the same place? What is going to make the difference? He said, but the Word of God shows that Peter did what the command of Christ was. Peter would say to us, he said, I started pulling back my nets. And he said, it was all I could do to get them in. They were about to break. Because I followed the promise of God even when it seemed ludicrous. Amen. Because when Jesus speaks, there's credibility to what He says. Amen. When Jesus speaks. I shared this on Tuesday evening, but I want to share it tonight or this morning. I was talking to a friend of mine, very sick, very, very sick. In fact, almost died. He... Uh, contracted a disease that is much like malaria um, that uh, he got from a tick. It mimics malaria when they look at it underneath the microscope. It looks like that. And the, word, the name is slipping my mind. My nurse is amnesia or something like that. He nurses about Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but, but he almost died. He said I was in the hospital. <clears throat> He said, I was there. He said, I had such a terrible headache. He said, I have such a wonderful family, great support system of people. He said, but they came to visit me. He said, I just wasn't comfortable for them. He said, because my head was hurting so bad. He said, I just wondered, even still, the doctors told me that I had half the blood in my body that I needed. I, need, I had a blood transfusion. He said, I was just feeling so bad. I questioned. He said, I knew I'd be in the presence of the Lord. He said, but I knew my family wanted me here. He said, and for the first time ever in my life, he said, I saw a vision. He said, I was laying in my hospital bed. He said, I was fully coherent. Just my head was hurting so bad. He said, I looked up and he said, I see this hand. He said, I knew it was a hand of God. I seen the white sleeve and the draping down. And it came to the top of my room. And he said, I thought the hand of God was coming down to touch me. 
He said, but it went right by me. And he said, all of a sudden, he grabbed it. And he said, his hand, as he was pulling his hand back, he said, you can't have her. And he said, the hand left. He said, immediately, my wife was sitting there. She, she, she said, honey, I, I just had a vision. And he said, wait a second, honey. My headache, it's completely gone. He said, from that moment on, I did not have a headache. He said, whether it was the headache that was coming against me, whether it was the enemy trying to take my life that was coming against me, amen, when God speaks, there is credibility, and He continues to get better. Amen. There's credibility in the, in, in the hand of God. Some folks may say, well, that was a little too much medicine. That was a headache working. Amen. I say you can call it what you want. You can think it's ludicrous, but I talk about a move of God. Amen. Where God shows up. And his credibility, you can trust him when he shows up on the scene. Amen. Hardly can believe my eyes. But when God works and moves, comes your credibility. Proverbs says this in Proverbs 30, verse number 5, and I'm closing. <clears throat> Every word of God is pure, he has shown unto them that put their trust in. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. I want to say it again. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him. Amen. Being put through the fire and tested, God's going to be with you. Amen. It's like a guaranteed package. You can be guaranteed it's going to be delivered and it's going to be pure because God shows up. If there's one thing that I want to do this morning is I just want to boost your confidence in God. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. I can go around the sanctuary and I won't do it for the sake of time. And I can say your name and say you can trust God. And I hope that's what you walk away this morning and know. You can trust God. Because He is great. I don't always know every outcome. I don't know every situation. I always don't know exactly how you feel. I can be empathetic. But I don't always know exactly how you feel in your situation. Because it is yours. But I can tell you with confidence that you can trust the credibility of God. You may say, well, that word incredible is a neat, a neat word. I'm not talking about make-believe superheroes. It's unbelievable that they live this life. Incredible. I'm not talking about superhero. I'm talking about a God who is so awesome and almighty and makes promises that are very credible with every head bowed and every eye closed all over this building. First of all, I just want to say this. This morning, the credibility of God is true. If you don't know Him as your Savior, the Bible says, for those whose name were not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life were cast into the lake of fire. The credibility is that if you don't know Him, there's an eternity of hell that's ahead for you. And that comes from a very credible source. But the credible source says this, that if you'll call upon the name of the Lord, that you will be saved. So I encourage you to take the credible source and trust and call upon Jesus for salvation today. For the saints of God, whatever you're going through, Maybe you've been holding to a verse. Maybe you've been holding to a moment in prayer where God's spoken to you. Amen. I want you to know that you can trust the credibility of God. He has promised that He'll be there through the change of season, through the day and through the night, that He'll never leave us. He's credible. So you can trust Him. This morning, 
I wonder if you would gather in around about these altars. And as you've held to the promises of God, as you've held to the Word of God, would you sit, come and say, God, you are credible, so I'm trusting you with the situation. Would everyone gather in this morning? Amen. Just gather in around these altars. Amen. He is God. He is credible. You can trust Him.